Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. So today's audio is going to be a little different, because I don't know why, but both of my microphones are not working. And I'm at the river. I am at the river in California, so if you hear that in the background, it is the gushing water of the river. I hope that it is ah, calming and melodic for you. Um because this is what we got. I came here and I was really excited to make a podcast. I just got out of Burning Man and this is what we got. So (laughs) I'm going to check the audio after, but I know it's going to be great. So in this episode, I really want to talk about, um, you know, being here in the States is showing me how much it is important for each of us to claim our personal sovereignty and our personal connection to the universe. So what does that mean? Um, Coming here has been such an energetic upgrade for me and at the same time I'm seeing how much my close friends and family are going through a really hard time. Like I know that on the island we live in a bubble. It's a very beautiful paradise bubble. And for a long time, I was using that bubble to heal. And I was also using that bubble to to grow my community, you know, my new earth community that I am excited to have. Um, And at the same time, my soul was asking for me to go and do something bigger and brighter and more expansive in the world. And that's why I came out here to the States. One, to come to Burning Man and have the greatest time, which I did. (laughs) And also to heal, the two is to heal my family stuff as much as possible to make myself available for healing for my family. And three is to tell the universe and do through my actions that I'm here and I'm here to expand and let's go. You know, like whatever that means, whoever I need to meet, whoever I need to collaborate Whatever I need to do in order to expand, I'm doing. And being here in the States, where my soul chose to be born, here in California, is creating this opportunity for me, one, to get a lot of energetic upgrades, and two, uh, putting myself out there to meet people to collaborate with uh, in the spiritual community and... um, just the leaders here in America and that's America so if you're American you don't say America like if you're from we call it being from the states I don't know but the longer I'm away from America the more I realize that I started calling it America which I find hilarious Um, I know that we are coming out of um, this idea of separation from our connection to source. This sounds very esoteric. My girlfriends joke with me that a lot of my podcasts get very spiritual very fast. But to put it in very simple terms, each one of us has our connection to source. Each one of us has an opportunity to connect deeper to something that is beyond this 3D dimension. And what I'm noticing here being in the States is how much everyone feels very disconnected. Not everyone, that's a very blatant turn, but a lot of people. And it's coming down even to the food that we eat. So here in the States, it's like most people eat very processed food. This might be other places in the world, but in the States, it's like to the max, Um, you know, fast food and also even what you get from the grocery store a lot of it is very very processed and this download I was getting this morning is like wow even the food that we're eating is disconnecting us from our bodies and therefore is disconnecting us from our source connection so I really invite you if you get one thing out of this podcast today to eat things that are actually from the ground and from nature whole we call it whole foods so like fruits and vegetables that are you you like buy them whole you don't buy them processed in something else that's been saturated in something else and added chemicals to you like buy an apple you buy a banana you buy a cucumber you you buy vegetables and fruit and you make things and 
you try your best to, I invite you, this is an invitation, to eat as like simply but as whole foods as possible. Because um, the more that you do this, the more your body is actually getting the nutrients from the food that you're eating. And the more you're getting the nutrients from the food that you're eating, the better you feel. And the better you feel, the more you realize that we are all connected. And it's easier to tap into this source connection that we all have. So basically, my download today that I really wanted to share with you is how much um, all of us are we have this opportunity like right now the world is inviting us to uh, be as disconnected and therefore as unhappy as possible so when you have a source connection when you realize that we are connected to something bigger than just this 3d dimension and we're supported and we're loved just for being ourselves and being the soul in the timeline then you don't need as much materially you don't need a fancy car. I mean, all these things are nice. Material things are nice, but you don't need it. The more disconnected we are from this source connection, the more that we are filling things. Uh, this can be food. This can be material things. This can be distraction on social media. The more that we are trying to fill this void, which is actually this feeling of disconnection because it doesn't feel good to be disconnected from source. It doesn't feel good to feel disconnected from each other and the earth. And so that's why my big download always is we need to be connected to ourselves, we need to be connected to the earth, and we need to be connected to each other. How do we actually do that in very simple terms? One, go into nature more. I'm literally at the river making this podcast and I was just soaking in the water and it's so crystal clear and so beautiful. Two, eat healthy food. Like this is our connection to nature also. And this is our nutrients. This is what fills us up. And three is like really be careful of what information you're taking in from social media, from the news, because everything is brainwashing. When you get over the fact that everything is brainwashing, you start choosing what you actually want to be positively brainwashed by. And I was just talking to a friend of mine just now when we were in the car because I was like, wow, a lot of them. So my friend from Salt Lake, when I lived in Salt Lake like 10 years ago, I call him my little brother. His name's Will. He drove all the way out from Salt Lake because he's going to come take me on this road trip to go visit all my family. And he's like my chosen little brother. So it's nice to have spiritual family with me while I go uh, and heal my blood family. Anyways, a lot of the music that he's listening to in the car with me, and I said to him, I was like, this music is what I listened to 10 years ago when I lived in Salt Lake. It's a lot of like folk music, but a lot of it's actually, the lyrics are very sad. And what I said to him, I was like, I used to listen to a lot of these lyrics, or I used to listen to a lot of this music, and then I can't remember what psychedelics I did, but I took psychedelics, and... Oh, wow. I'm just realizing it's really loud. I might need to make this podcast later when I'm back at the campsite. Uh, um, I'm just going to say it and then I'll figure out if I want to release this podcast. Um, but basically, I, I created... Oh, I did a lot of psychedelics and then I realized, yes, we're all positively or negatively brainwashed. We get to decide, but it's literally every single input of information affects us vibrationally. And so for a long time after that realization, I only listened to music that didn't have lyrics because and I could more easily tell if the vibration of the music was a positively, like I was basically taking one factor out and I was just like, does this sound of this music, does these vibrations make me feel good? And then after I figured that out for a while, I added music on top, but I made sure that all of the lyrics were positive music and they were uplifting and positively brainwashing me. And that's why I discovered this whole genre of music called medicine music. Um, you can look this up on Spotify or YouTube. And it's stuff like Trevor Noah and um, I'm trying to think of other... Well, Trevor Noah is kind of my favorite in that genre of music. But like his lyrics are really, really uplifting. So that's just a really good example. So if you're like, what is medicine music? Look up Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. It's like folk music, but all the and all the lyrics are just like completely uplifting. I actually made a 
playlist of music like this. If I remember, I'll put it in my, in the, the YouTube and the Spotify comments. If I forget, just reach out to me and I'll put it on there. But right now what I realized is like, this is kind of like a, <laughs> you know, in America, they say this on the news, like we have a war on drugs or a war on terrorism or whatever. And right now I feel like it's a war on sovereignty. It's a war on our connection to source, our connection. And this can be whatever that means to you, like source, God, universe. But I really believe, and I really believe that we all have a connection and we all belong to something bigger than us. And we are so loved and we are so supported by this connection to source and this connection to each other. And all we need to do is believe in it and be in the knowingness of it and also you know, make sure we're protecting the energy around us and then we're more easily able to connect. And that's why I was saying about the food and being in nature and making sure you're in, you're in charge of what information is coming into your vortex. If you're able to do all of these things, you're a million times ahead of most people in the world because most people are very unhappy and they don't understand why. And I'm noticing this here in the States because on the island, it really is such a bubble. We have such first world problems. And I come here and like food is so expensive. People are just like, just really dragged down by the politics and just by the cost of living here. And I'm feeling for them, you know, and I'm just like, how can I help people? And also how can I, you know, keep shining my bright light out in the world? And so for me, this is, a very big test and a very big opportunity for growth for me and I'm also having the greatest time especially with these braids in my hair um, there's a lot more I want to share but I think I'll do it when it's quieter um, so maybe I'll finish this podcast in a little bit okay I like tried to figure out my mic again see if it would work for a minute like on the regular one anyways I'm back I just feel really called to make a podcast so whether this one's a little fuzzy or whatever or you can hear kids screaming in the background I know you're with me. We're in this together. Um, but what I was talking to Will about earlier was like, I really believe that right now is this huge moment where we are all deciding. So we each get a choice of whether we are going to allow ourselves to be in the knowingness that we are fully supported by the universe, that we don't have to do anything to feel this source connection that our soul god universe whatever you want to call it is here for us and fully supporting us and that this life is just a game that we are playing in order to grow our soul and learn the lessons that we want to learn you can call it karma you can call it whatever i like to think of it as a video game and that in the end it's all for the benefit it's all, it's all working out for us. And what is so interesting about understanding the structure of reality is that when you actually believe that it's all working out for you, it all works out for you. It's our deeper belief system that creates our reality. And so, you know, people might think I'm crazy or delusional by the, the life that I, le I live because I live in full abundance and, and full adventure. I'm in heaven and Sagittarius. I don't know if you're into astrology, you know what that means. So for me, I love adventure. I love new countries, new people, new energy. And also, I feel very divinely guided and supported by the universe. When I was coming out here to the States, I was like, scared <laughs> and also just like what am I doing you know okay cool it's cool to go to Burning Man and I launched a course when I was at Burning Man and we have amazing people in this course that's happening right now and so it it feels that I'm you know I am divinely aligned and things are happening and also at the same time I was like I could feel that there was some deeper reason why I needed to be here in the states and it's slowly unfolding I mean the main thing is to see my family and if you listen to the last podcast, you know that I called them right before I came out to Burning Man. And they all said, like most of them said they would meet with me. Um, the only person that I haven't, the only two people that really mean a lot to me that I haven't had a full yes from is my mother and my older sister. And I know the only reason why they have not done that is because they're in the religion and that comes with its own brainwashing. So, and I'm open to everything, right? 
But there's something bigger, even beyond that, that why I'm here in the States. And it's kind of starting to come to a full, a full realization for me. Um, I had my, oh, a squirrel just ran by. That's exciting. I had my astrology reading done by my friend Luna when I was um, on my way back from Burning Man. We were in the car and she was looking at my astrology. And one thing she said to me is like, because I have rising Aquarius, the energy around me, especially as I step more um, past my Saturn return, which has happened recently, uh, is that I need to be fighting for a cause. Like, this is just who I am. I can't just do something for money. I can't just do something just because it's fun. Like, I need to do it because it's fun and also because I literally feel like I'm changing the world for the better. This is the Aquarius energy. It's like new earth energy for the collective, all that, right? And coming here to the States and seeing how uh, sad everyone is um, or just, you know, people are doing the best they can with what they have, right? It is one thing for me to be in Thailand and see stuff on the news and understand, you know, what's happening here from a, a very separated viewpoint, like a energy, like my energy is very separated from what's happening. Like it doesn't affect me very much. And then to come here and be with my friends and my soul family and see how much it is directly affecting them, like the energy that's happening here in the States. And for me, this is an energy that represents the rest of the world of how this is affecting everyone. And it's hitting closer to home for me because this is literally my home. And these are literally my friends and my soul family and my actual family, my blood family. Um, and it's really igniting something in me about how important it is for us to build this new earth spiritual community. One that is not attached to a religion, one that is not attached to a political affiliation, one that is literally here to remind us to be empowered in, oh, my camera's doing weird things, uh, remind us to be empowered in ourselves. Hold on. <laughs> this is, so I left my, my selfie stick in the RV and my, um, my, microphones are not working this is what happens when you go to burning man it's all part of the adventure um so we're back we're back um what i was saying was that like we are here to make this new earth community i am here you were here we let's do it together let's do this together do you want to do this with me let's do this together this is why I started launching my courses because I realized there's a lot of information and um, I was talking to someone yesterday and we were like, how do we, how do we share with some, someone something that is, is an embodiment? It's a vibrational embodiment. Like literally you need to be able to feel this in your body. How do you teach that to someone? And I was sharing with her like, yeah, this is why I started doing my courses because there's there are tools that I have learned over the years. There are things that have actually helped me to come into this full embodiment. Because I really believe, I say this a lot in my podcast, and I fully believe this, that half of spiritual awakening is intellectual. It's understanding the structure of reality. It's understanding how our belief systems are what actually create our reality, that everything happens internally and is reflected externally. And that's how we create our reality is like it starts from us within we are actually here in this 3d dimension playing this game and the game is how much can you uncover any negative beliefs and release them and allow yourself to feel this source connection the second half of spiritual awakening is in your body is it is allowing that belief system to drop into your body, allowing your body to be this vessel. The way I like to think of it is our bodies are just an empty vessel for energy to move through. And when you're sad or when you get diseases, you know, let's, let's start that sentence over. When people have some sort of chronic illness it's usually because they're not allowing the energy to move through their body in a fluid way it's getting stuck somewhere and when energy gets built up it causes disease because it's our body is a somatic map it's a map an energetic map 
showing us what is happening in our lives. It's giving us red flags. It's going like ding, ding, ding. So this is not working. You need to stop. You need to stop this about your life. It's not working. It, when you start understanding how the body works and you start understanding how to read your body map and how the energy is moving through. <laughs> this is the adventure of Brittany Bond making a podcast in nature. Um, if you are not watching visually, my camera just fell. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> my camera fell like five times. Anyways, um, what I'm realizing is that when you allow yourself to drop into your body fully, this is called full embodiment, you are allowing the energy to move through your body. You're sensing what's happening in your body. This is all intuitive downloads from your higher self, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. And for me, this is full embodiment. And imagine if we had a whole community of people who were awake to understanding the timeline that we're in spiritually, like spiritually awake to, on the analytical intellectual side of what's happening in the world, where we are in the timeline, what's going to happen next, and also dropped into their bodies where they understand that our bodies need to be nourished, need to have healthy fruits and vegetables every day, need to be exercised. We need to use our body as this vessel of energy to move through and also listen to our body and be intuitive with our body because it's always telling us something from our higher selves, from God, from source, from the universe. Uh, if you didn't know this, your left side of your body is for everyone, whether you're a guy or girl, your left side of your body is your feminine energy and your right side of the body is your masculine energy. So if you injure yourself on your right side of your body, this is usually masculine energy is the energy that you give out in the world. So if you injure yourself on your right side of the body, it's usually some energy that you are giving out in the world is not in alignment with what your higher self, your soul, God, the universe is having planned for you. If you hurt yourself on your left side of the body, it's usually that there's some energy coming, you're receiving some energy in your life that is not serving you and you need to look at it. It's all super interesting. This is what I'm talking about, like somatic experiencing. Somatic experiencing means the energy moving through your body, noticing what's happening in the sensations of your body and putting meaning to them in a way that is benefiting you and also helping you to feel more connected. So the more of us that are feeling this connection, the more powerful we are. This is what I'm trying to tell you is I'm here to create this new earth community where we feel so connected to our bodies, so connected to source and so connected to nature and each other. Because when we are in that mode, we are actually in the new earth vibration, fifth dimension, whatever you want to call it. People have very many names and they fight over all these names and I do not care. All I care about is that we are in it together and that we're feeling good and that we're moving forward and we're building a new earth together. And being here home, in my home, I'm in California right now, is really showing me how much people need help with this. And I have so much energy for this to help us feel connected to each other, to ourselves, to nature, to source. And that you don't need to do anything in order to feel this source connection. You deserve it just for being a soul in the timeline. Do you realize that there are so many souls that are trying to come down and be born here just so they can witness this transformational age where we all wake up to the fact that we have a source connection and that we're all connected to each other and that we're all connected to the earth? Do you realize how exciting this time is right now? I don't know if you realize. I realize it. So this is the being awake in my head, you know, the half of the intellectual awakeness. And the way that I utilize that in my body is one, I get super excited. <laughs> and two, I, you know, I do things like make this podcast and share this with you. I take action through my body. I use my, my body as a vessel to share this beautiful, warm energy with you that you are so connected. You are so supported. You are so loved by me and by the universe and by nature. <sighs> you got this. I hope that this podcast is helpful for you, even with all the beautiful background noise. I don't know what is going on with my podcast equipment. Uh, I'm grateful that I have a one-year warranty on it because I just bought it recently. Um, 
I'm sending you all lots of love and yeah, while Burning Man was such an adventure, there's so much I want to share, but I want to do it when it's quieter. I just feel really called to make this message right now. And I hope that this is, and I know, I'm in the knowingness that this is something that's beneficial for you. And I'm here to activate you to do something today that is making you feel more connected to yourself, more connected to nature, more connected to your body. Ask your body what does it need right now and listen to it. A lot of us need more rest than we're actually allowing ourselves. A lot of our bodies need more exercise than we're actually allowing ourselves. And a lot of our bodies actually need more fresh fruit and fruits and vegetables than we're allowing ourselves. So here's some kind and gentle reminders and invitations for you to take care of your body and love it and be gentle with it and allow yourself to feel this connection to source, to God, to the universe, to your higher self, whatever you feel called to say. The reason why I always say all of those things is because in the past, when I was leaving my religion, anytime someone referenced the word God, I got very, very triggered. Because for me, it it attached to a religious group of mostly middle-aged white men coming in between my me and my source connection my connection to the universe my connection to god they were like we will tell you what you need to do in order to deserve this source connection you need to listen to us and after i left my religion i realized that's all bullshit that's a way to control people and disempower them And uh, it's taken me 10 years to come full circle and believe in some sort of higher consciousness. So everything I'm sharing with you is actually very new for me to allow myself to express and to be in the knowingness of. I've also had a lot of experiences recently on psychedelics and sober, just meditating, where I really felt this source connection. And now I am fully embodied in it and I feel it all the time. And you know what happens when you feel source connection all the time? If you've ever taken psychedelics, the most, I, the, the most I can relate it to is drinking a cup of cacao, taking a little MDMA, and a little bit of mushrooms. Because my heart is so open, and I am so grateful for everything that I have, and everything that comes through me. And I realize that all I have to do, like when I'm on mushrooms, I'm in this mode a lot where I I realize everything is happening for me right now and everything is so beautiful and all I need to do is slow down and appreciate the rocks and the river and my, my soul family that's here with me and you know just these beautiful apples that I brought and this banana and this chai that I made and I'm just like honestly I cry at least three times a day out of gratitude <laughs> that's just my life now and also just so you know I'm completely sober these days so being able to feel all of those things sober and be in that full embodiment like psychedelics for me is showing us the vibration of what we can live on all the time and once you have taken those psychedelics you can access that vibration the work the integration of that psychedelic trip is to be able to get to that vibration soberly and I have done that and it's so beautiful and I want this for all of you and I wish this for all of you and I know that you can also get there so that's my little rambly ramble that I have fun doing it and I know that it is beneficial for all of you and now I have to pee and I'm excited to get in the river not both at once (laughs) but um yeah I'll see you in the next episode and I promise it will be quieter but I know that you guys all enjoyed this and I'm sending you all lots of love bye